Hello again, I'm happy to announce that this week we're doing my favorite beverage category, which is sake, as most of you know. And not only that, we're doing my favorite subcategory, which is unpasteurized sake, uh, known as nama sake. So this one in particular is from Osaka Prefecture. It's from Akishika Shuzo, and it's called Okarakuchi Super Dry. Okarakuchi means extra dry palate, and the word karakuchi is very well known for meaning just dry and is on a lot of dry sakes uh, that are available. So this one also has a few other categories that are pretty interesting. We'll start with Jinmai. It's a Jinmai, it's Maroka, it's a Nama, as mentioned before, and it's also Genshu. So Jinmai is a premium sake category, and Jinmai is known for uh, being the category where there are no additives. It's only kome koji, yeast, water, and rice. So it's completely pure sake. Um, it's also uh, the category that has no milling requirement. So the rice polishing ratio, also known as semi buai, is 60% here. So that is quite high. Um, that's pretty much where you'd find a lot of ginjos. Uh, ginjo goes from 50 to 60%, um, and jinmais, like I said, have no milling category, so you can have various styles of jinmai. But the main thing to remember is there are no additives. Um, so this is maroka. Maroka means there's been no charcoal filtration. And this is also a genshu. So genshu means that there's been no dilution. Uh, sake is normally diluted down to about 15 to 16% alcohol, kind of similar to some spirit production like whiskey, where they'll um, dilute down to a more palatable 40% ABV or 80%, uh, 80 proof. And um, this would be kind of like a cask strength. Uh, so with all that combined, this is a sake in its most pure state. And I am very enthusiastic about Nama. Nama has live enzymes. It also has uh, some microorganisms and uh, trace yeast that's left over after pressing uh, from fermentation, which is why sakes are normally pasteurized uh, after storage and before bottling. So this is a sake that you definitely need to keep in the fridge. You have to uh, be very aware of how you store it or how it's shipped to your export market. And uh, you should drink this within four months of bottling. And there's a bottling date on every bottle of sake. This one though, you could age, but I'll get to that later. All right, so I haven't had this in quite a while. I'm really excited to taste it again. Um, you can use different glassware. So what I have here is a really cool um, Sakazuki with a rat on it. And I got this as a gift for the year of the rat, which was 2020, which was the year we just went through. And it is a year of transformation. Uh, then we also have a stemless wine glass, one of my favorite vessels for sake, especially Nama, because Nama comes off very exuberant and uh, lively, and I love to be able to um, experience the aromas, and it helps to have uh, a glass that has more sides to it. All right, so as you can see, since it's not charcoal filtered, there is some color to this sake. So sake, believe it or not, does not come out clear. That's after filtration. Sake is naturally um, yellow to green in hue. Wow, I forgot about <laughs> how cool this sake is. Um, I'm smelling some yeasty character, obviously. Um, there's kind of like a vanilla frosting-esque aroma, cocoa nib, uh, like a fresh dough. That would be the yeasty character. All right. So on the palate, it is fresh. It goes down so easy. Um, again, it's okarakuchi, so extra dry. And they specify super dry. This has um, a sake meter value of plus 18. So that's similar or is a reading of specific gravity. 
using a hydrometer. If you're in the plus uh, range, you're going to have a drier sake. So plus five and above is considered karakuchi. And uh, this is one of the highest SMVs I've ever seen. Um, I've only seen one uh, other sake higher than this and it was plus 20. Um, if you're getting to negative two and then into the negative realm, you're tasting residual sugar. Uh, so this is very dry, but not to the point where I'm not getting uh, pleasure out of the texture of it. it. It's not just evaporating on the palate. Um, and you know, it's actually good to use a glass without the bowl so you can taste the sake and the lip of the glass just kind of throws the liquid over your palate and it's arguably better for flavor and this one would be technically better for the nose. So let's see how it is in the Sakazuki. So right away I get impact right in the front. Um, I'm getting that cocoa nib thing again. I'm getting um, salt. Uh, I'm getting, again, like this delicate vanilla flavor to it. Uh, again, dry. So you're getting sweet related aromas and flavors with no sugar. And that's one of my favorite um, aspects of certain sakes. So this is super cool. Um, one of my great friends said that I should keep this in the fridge and taste it every six months. So that's kind of like the anti-nama. You're not normally supposed to age an unpasteurized sake, but some of them just do the most interesting things. Uh, so I will in the comments uh, let you know every six months how this is doing. Uh, but a little more about the sake. It does have a higher acidity than you'd normally find. So it's a 2.2. And um, the yeast used is yeast 11. So yeast 11 is a relative of yeast 7. And it's known for its capability of surviving at really high alcohol contents, which is what makes it really good for dry style sakes. Um, it is Yamada Nishiki. So that is the king of sake rice. Um, what else? It is not only plus 18 SMV, but it is also 18% alcohol content because it is a Genshu. And honestly, I mean, I don't even really feel it. The only way you'll notice the alcohol content here is if you really focus on your throat and the warming um, aspect of it. But you should be drinking this chilled. You should drink it straight out of the fridge um, and maybe upwards of 50 to 55 Fahrenheit. I would not drink it any warmer. Uh, that being said, if you want to experiment and you want to do, you know, room temp and I mean, you could heat it just to see what happens, but um, that is going to accentuate the alcohol content a lot. Uh, to drink this chilled, I think is absolutely the best way. And this sake is normally available um, through true sake, especially but um it depends so sometimes you know it's not as available as other times right now i'm not sure if it's available but it is um around 45 to 55 dollars um when i worked there it used to be in a smaller 500 milliliter bottle i think it was pushing 40 dollars uh so this is a 720 milliliter it's closer to the size of a standard wine bottle which is 750 milliliter um but it is definitely worth seeking out uh, i highly recommend it uh, for pairings, I would probably do uh, some tempura, so veggie tempura, beef tempura. Um, <laughs> I want to pair this with sweet things, even though it's dry. I know that sounds weird, but I feel like it would be super cool with vanilla ice cream. You just eat the vanilla ice cream, you've got that rich texture, the flavor, and then you've got this crazy dry sake that has vanilla notes and cocoa nib notes. And then it would just kind of like refresh the palate. I've honestly never done this, but I think it could be amazing. Um, I'd also do this with maybe some Osaka street food, like okonomiyaki. And it's made with cabbage, flour, egg. It's kind of like a crazy uh, griddle dish and you can add pork belly to it and bonito flake and mayo and sriracha and a million things. And this would just clean your palate right up after um, enjoying some fun Osaka street food. You could even do some takoyaki, which are octopus balls if you weren't uh, aware. 
uh, yeah, so I'm excited to see you on the next video. It will be another Nama. It will be from Nara Prefecture, and it will be a Bodai Moto. And we'll get into what that means later. All right, guys. See you later.